Hello there, this is Xiao, and welcome to today's episode of Vox FX. This tutorial is about reverb and how to use it to add space to your vocals. I'll be building off some of the things I discussed last time, so if you didn't see episode 20, go check it out. And remember, if you're lost, check the tutorial archive. With that out of the way, let's get started. Reverb! As I mentioned in my previous tutorial, an echo happens when sound bounces off a hard surface and comes back to our ears. But sound doesn't just travel in a straight line. Besides the direct sound itself, the sound source produces sound in all directions. That's why you can hear sound from a speaker that's pointing away from you. But that's not all you're hearing. When something makes sound in a room, that sound travels out in all directions and hits everything in the room. Some things absorb sound, while others reflect it. Eventually, the reflections of sound come to your ears, usually after the direct sound from the source. These sound reflections are collectively known as reverberation, or reverb for short. Every space has its own character of reverb, which can be used to creatively add Add flavor to a sound. Indeed, that's how early audio engineers added reverb to their recordings. They found a space that sounded cool and recorded the performers in that space. This technique is still used today with great results. Like I said in my video on mic placement, the first step is picking a room that sounds good. But what if you don't have access to cool sounding spaces? Or what if you want more control over the reverb in your music? Well, audio engineers figured out many ways to create reverb. Some engineers used speakers to vibrate a spring and then and recorded the spring's vibrations. Others pointed the sound source at a large metal plate and detected the vibrations off of that. While many producers still use spring reverb and plate reverb because they sound cool, reverb today is usually digital. There are two types of reverb plugins, algorithmic reverb and convolution reverb. I'll be focusing on the first one for this video. Reverb is quite powerful. It adds polish and sheen to instruments and helps create a sense of depth and space in your mix. So here's our song from last time. I was a normal unicorn, but my life's been turned around. All that I I've disabled the delay plugin so that we can focus on the new stuff. I could just put the reverb plugin right on the vocal track like I did with the delay. But I prefer to put the reverb on its own mixer track, called a send. That way, I can route a copy of the vocal audio to that track, and then process it separately from the vocal. I prefer to do it this way for a couple reasons. First, it makes it easy to route several instruments to the same reverb. This puts them in the same space, which helps them fit together better. Second, it lets me add reverb to many tracks with one plugin, which saves on CPU. Finally, it gives me much more control over the reverb. I could turn it up and down separate from the vocal, I can control the volume of each instrument's input send, and I can add many effects to the reverb without altering the vocal. So let's take a look at the send track and have a look at the reverb itself. Reverb plugins come in a variety of shapes and sizes and can have many different controls, but there are a few that are common to them all. If you can master these controls, you can use any reverb plugin. First, like a delay, reverb has a wet and dry mix level control. If you have your reverb inserted on your vocal track, set the balance to whatever sounds good to you. But if you have it on a send like this, make sure the wet level is set to 100% and the dry level is set to 0% so that you're hearing just the reverb on this send. If the reverb is too loud, you can either turn down the volume of the send track itself or you can control the volume of the input send from the vocal track. These each sound different, so experiment to see which one sounds better for you. So let's go back to the plugin. The next control, and arguably the most important one, is the reverb time, also known as decay time. This controls how long it takes for the reverb sound to go from full volume to silence. I was a normal unicorn, but my life's been turned around. All that I have now. The reverb time can drastically alter the feel of the reverb in your track. I'll get into that in a bit. Next is the pre-delay control. Pre-delay determines how long the reverb plugin waits before the reverb sound actually begins. Again, an important control. I was a normal I was I was a normal you I was
See, it makes a big difference. Your reverb may have other controls on it, like room size, bass boost, high dampening, room type, and many others. These control the flavor of the reverb, but they're best set to taste, so I won't get into them here. I encourage you to experiment with these controls and see what sounds good on each instrument. One quick note though, I generally prefer to use larger rooms for longer reverb times, and vice versa. Now the trickiest thing about reverb is balancing it. It should be noticeable enough that you can hear it or feel it, but not so noticeable that it makes everything sound blurry and indistinct. So let me explain how I use reverb in my mixes to reduce this problem. First, I usually use three reverb sends because each instrument needs a different reverb. I break these up by reverb time. I usually have a short reverb, which is less than a second, a medium reverb, this one, which is one to two seconds, and a long reverb, which is two seconds or longer. I don't usually use reverb times longer than two and a half seconds unless I'm going for a special effect. I then test instruments on each reverb to see which one sounds best for that instrument. Bear in mind that some instruments often have no reverb, like your kick or your bass drum. I have the vocal currently in the medium reverb because I thought that one sounded best. Second, I make sure the pre-delay time is at least 20 milliseconds. There, that's about 20. That way, the reverb doesn't muffle the transients of the instrument. It can also be helpful to sync the pre-delay time to the tempo of the song so that it's less noticeable. Finally, I like to EQ my reverb sends. This is especially important for vocals. You almost always want to use a high-pass filter and a low-pass filter on your reverb. Some reverbs, like this one, have a built-in filter control. But I prefer to use a dedicated EQ plugin as this gives me much more control. It's generally good to roll off the extreme highs and the extreme lows of your reverb. For vocals, I prefer to use what some producers call the Abbey Road setting. High pass at 600 hertz and low pass at 10k. I also like to put a small dip at around 2k to 5k. That way, the reverb doesn't block the presence frequencies of the vocal. Feel free to play around with placing the EQ before or after the reverb, as this makes a difference in how it sounds. Let's turn the EQ on and off so you can hear the difference. I was a normal unicorn, but my life's been turned around. As you can hear, the EQ tames the reverb and makes it much more subtle. This means you can add a lot more reverb without it being distracting. But still, be careful about how much you use. Now let's listen in the track. I was a normal unicorn, but my life's been turned around. All that I have known has been up and Another cool little vocal trick, placing a delay before the reverb on the send. I was a normal unicorn, but my life's been turned around. All that good stuff. So there you go, a simple reverb setup for your mix to help you get started. Don't be afraid to get creative though. Anyway, that's about it for this video. If you liked what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. If you want more information or have any questions about reverb, comment below. I'm always open for questions. And as always, if you'd like to request a Vox FX tutorial, please send me a message. Remember, if it's talky, I can talk about it. Next time, I'll take a break from ambient effects to talk about the proper use of distortion. Until then, have fun and keep making sound. Vox FX.
wow, that was attractive. 